Hey guys, welcome back. This is Nigel again with you. Um, we're going to be looking at now fitting out this rear diff casing, which I've got here, rear diff housing, should I say, with the new shims and bearings. Well, I've got the bearings, the original bearings, with the new shims from Ashcroft's. Um, what we're going to do is set the position of the pinion to get the right pattern. Um, if you remember, I did it before, I think the pattern was high, so I'm going to move the, the uh, pinion to get the pattern more, cent more centred on the crown wheel. Now, you're going to wonder why I'm doing this with an ordinary diff when I've got an Ashcroft locker going in. Basically, it doesn't matter what you use for doing this because the diameter and the centre of the crown wheel, the ring gear, is fixed. So you could bolt it to a piece of metal. As long as it's running true in the bearings, then it doesn't matter what you use. All we're doing is adjusting the, the side to side. Uh, the actual, as long as it's running true, that position won't change whatever diff you have. You could change it for... You know, as long as the crown wheel will fit that diff casing, then basically you could use anything. So I'll be doing it with that part originally, rather than keep taking the um, ash locker in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, so that's that's why I'm using the original diff. Um, the other thing is, when we come to fit the ash locker, one of the first things we need to do is drill a hole. We need to drill a hole in the casing, as per the instructions here. We've got to drill a hole and fit a, a quarter inch BS, well tap a cute quarter inch BSP tap in there, a uh, thread in there and then fit a, a brass fitting. So as I've got this casing completely ripped apart, as you can see it's completely bare, there's nothing in there at all, there's no bearings, nothing. Now seems like a good time to do that rather than risk having swarf going into the bearings um, and, and drilling it because this is cast, it's going to make that very very tiny particulates of, uh, of, of swarf. So um, if you haven't got, if you're not in this situation, if your pinions run absolutely fine, your pattern's fine, your bearings are fine, your seal's fine. If I were you, I would um, put a rag, well, cover the cover the bearing in grease, put a rag over that, and then perhaps something else over that, a grease covered rag or something, to catch any swarf. And then once you've done your drilling and tapping, um, get all the grease out as much as you can by going underneath and pulling it out so the swarf stays with the grease. And then if any grease has got in there, you need to wash it out with something. And if you're going to use paraffin or something, I would then seriously recommend changing the seal. And if you're going to change the seal, you may as well take the pinion out um, and wash everything properly like that and inspect your bearings. So um, if I were you, if you go into the trouble of fitting an ash locker for the cost of a seal, it's got to be worth you know, undoing that knot on the end of the pinion um, and taking the, the pinion out and just having a look at everything, washing it all, cleaning it all making sure there's no crap collected up in the, in the diff of the nose, the nose of the diff, sorry. And also check there's no corrosion around the outside of the seal like I had, which actually pushed the seal in and distorted it and uh, made it leak. So um, basically that's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is drill the housing. Now, obviously a lot of you watching this are going to think, oh my God, anyone can do, anyone can do that. There are a lot of people out there that wouldn't know where to start, believe me. And would be afraid of doing so. So I'm going to do a little step by step on how I do this, draw this hole, what I'm going to use and I mean I've got a little milling machine I could use but I'm not going to use that, I'm going to use my ordinary little battery drill and I've got a 6mm drill, an 8.5mm drill, a 10.5mm drill and I've actually got a 2964. So the book says use 2964 or 11.5. My 11.5 is broken so I broke the end off it and threw it away stupidly instead of regrinding it. Um, but I have got this whole 2964 and I've actually machined the Morse taper off the end of it so I can use it in the drill. <laughs> so we'll see how we go with that. Um, so what I'm going to do is first of all we'll, um, we'll get the camera on the bench and have a look and show you what I'm doing and then we'll get this hole drilled out. Right, so if you look in the book, what they're actually saying in the book is it's telling you first of all to remove the centre and uh, make sure the bearing caps refit on the correct side and everything. Um, Drill and tap the diff housing. The drill size is 29.64, but 11.5 will work. And they're telling you to drill it there. So that is, when we look at our housing, we've got the, on the bottom, you've got your flat here. So turn that over so that's facing away from you. And you're going to drill it here, which is next to the bowl where the oil feed is for the uh, bearings. So that's where that's going to go. It's going to go roughly here. Now, I've got this piece of aluminium with a 6mm hole in it, you can see, and the reason I've got this out is I'm going to use what's called a centre drill. Now if you're not familiar with engineering, this is what's known as a centre drill. 
and it's a brilliant bit of kit because they're designed to be used very fast um, but it's great for doing centers because you can see it's got a very you can you can get all sorts of different sizes there's number one and two and three and number one's the smallest um, but basically it will pick up on a center pot and then you can go from there and it will it will make a, a, a small inc incision and then it will start to go and form a cone for a bigger drill to pick up in so it's a great way to start a hole in thicker metal um, so if you don't have any look them up they're very worth having so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use because of this surface isn't flat um, I want to make sure that the for when I tap it I want to make sure it's as perpendicular to the surface as I can get it what I'm going to do is use this bush okay and I'm going to hold this bush flat against the surface and then drill through with that bush in place okay so what I'm going to do is just come along with the drill I'm not sure how well you can see this maybe I should try and go from the side a bit more can you see that I'm sure you can okay so I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to position that bush and I'm going to hold it flat on the surface okay so that's made a spot now so I've got a spot there just bring the camera down to show you there's a spot there you can see here you can see there's a spot where the centre drill has been and it's made a mark so I can now come in with the drill okay that's better I've got the diff positioned on a piece of wood now so hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on um, so we'll put the drill in there hold that block of aluminium square and just drill and there we go so that is the that's what a centre draw does for you. It gives you this kind of, where are we? Where is it? There it is. It gives you a kind of cone. You can see a cone and then when you come along with, a, with another drill, as I can show you here, when you come along with another drill, it will come in and pick up in that hole. You see, so you've got something to, to start that drill off. And that's what centre drills are for. Right, so I'm going to come with the 6mm drill now. The 6mm drill will fit in this in this guide beautifully. I've also put a drop of oil in there just to help with the cutting. So we get the drill in the centre, hold this block nice and square, get the drill roughly, and then just drill down. And once we've gone some of the way, Still not enough. I think this drill has seen better days to be honest. Right, so I've opened this hole in the edge of six and a half mil. I've got a six and a half mil drill rather than sharpen the other one so that's going to go in there like that put some more oil in the hole so now we can once again come along with our guide we've also slowed the drill down it looks like I'm struggling guys I think it's purely because my drills are all blunt I should really take a couple of hours just to clean them all up and get them all resharpened As you can see, once you get a certain depth, you um, you're okay to uh, take the you know not use the guide because the drill will follow its own path anyway. It will, it will always now when I go with subsequent drills, a drill will always follow what was there to a certain extent. You can't you can't rely on you know point one accuracy or whatever, but it will always follow what was there. And now you can see why I've done this before doing any bearings or anything. You can see how nice that would be for the bearings. Get that in there. So now what I need to do is go to the eight mil drill. Okay, so we've gone through the 8mm drill, now we just go through the 10, put a drop of oil on here, just to help it on its way. 
So I've got the drill on a slow speed, no pressure. You can see if you can This is actually a 10.5mm Horrible stuff to drill. It's cast, cast steel or something. I don't know what it is. It's pretty horrible. Uh, and then we try the bigger drill now, the 2964th to finish off. This is a three fluted drill, so I don't know how it's going to perform, but we shall see. So nice and slow. And the drill has just tripped out or broken or something. Flat battery suddenly just stopped. <laughs> so, you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, you can see what I'm doing. It's really funny stuff to drill. It's like it's kind of got pockets in it. So the drill just picks up. It's drilling lovely one minute and then it just snags, you can see. Awful. Look at it. There we go, we're through. That's horrible. It's probably full of inclusions and holes and all sorts of just cheap rubbish casting <laughs> judging by the rest of the bloody vehicle right so um we get cleaned up now okay so i've got my tap and this is a quarter b quarter bsp tap unfortunately i don't have a first tap with a big taper on this so this is a second tap so basically with taps you get first second and bottoming and the bottoming is threaded all the way to the end the second tap is like this one with a slight lead on it you can see the the teeth is slightly ground away and then a, a um first tap, number one tap, will have a longer taper on it to guide you in. So this is going to be a little bit difficult and I may go a bit skew with, but the thing is the hole is so, the metal is so thick it'll be okay. So I'm going to try and pick up as true as I can um, and what will happen is it will just sort itself out as it goes through. Now the proper way to do this will be to mount this on a milling machine, drill it all on the same and then and then when you tap it, you can make sure it's all in the same, um, on the same axis sort of thing. So I'm just going to start this and just see how it looks. Now it's looking quite perpendicular to the surface. That's the main thing. I just want it to be, it doesn't need to be perfect. I just want it to sort of look right, you know. Um, once again, we've got this problem with it all moving around. There we go, the thread started. Yep, that's looking good to me. I've got sort of two or three threads on the other side. So, um, I can just continue to tap it now. I think the best thing would be to put it in a vise if I can. Right, so that's all done. We can see we've got the hole in there now. And we can check that's okay. If we take a quarter inch pneumatic fitting, quarter inch BSP, that will just screw in there. So we can tell that our thread's all good and everything's all looking hunky dory. So happy with that. Now, the next thing I've noticed is in fact, I'm going to rename this video. I'm going to call this Preparation for Fitting an Ashcroft Diff. Um, I've noticed on here it says you may have to grind the inside of the journal end caps if they foul the centre. So I've got a milling machine, I'll mill them rather than grind them. But um, what I'm going to do now is get the diff, fit it in there and check that it's all clear because, as I say, I don't want to be inducing swore for anything into the, um, into the process after I've started fitting bearings. So uh, I'll get cleaned up and I'm going to go and get the diff and we'll try that out. Well, that was stupid. I mean, I could have edited this out, but I'm not going to because maybe you'll think the same and then you won't make the same mistake as me. So I'm thinking, right, okay, so what I'll do is I'll get the, the diff in, 
and um, I'll check that the bearing caps don't don't uh, foul or anything before we um, before we get it all assembled. And then I realised, well, I've got to assemble everything because I need to check the backlash and everything. So because the position that the diff sits here is determined by the pinion, so I need to build the pinion into it before I can do that anyway. So hopefully there'll be enough clearance here. And I'll just have to machine the caps perhaps but um, if I have to machine here I'm gonna have to take all the bearings out again so uh, so we're going to get these uh, get this pinion in and do a check okay so we've got everything here and this is our basically it's gonna be a rough build so what we do is build this find the correct shims well I'm, I'm gonna build it and see how it looks um, with the with the standard um, crime wheel in there and then Basically, just try and leave the, the end piece, the end caps in the same place and put the diff in. I just want to check that I don't have to start machining things before I get start fitting bearings and stuff. I don't want some off getting anywhere. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is, is try and relocate this, this pinion. Now this is the shim. This bearing goes in this way up. Okay, so you can imagine when it's in your diff looking at it now, it's like that. Okay, so this shim pushes this bearing upward. So this is pushing your pinion into your crown wheel. Now, I seem to remember I had to go thinner, <clears throat> but I also seem to remember seeing something that it can be deceptive. You think you need to go thinner, but you actually need to go thicker. So this one is, uh, what's that? 2, 2.1, okay, I've written it up here. The rear is 2.1, yes. So I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna go for something like 1.9. This is the Ashcroft Rover Diff Shim Kit which I would recommend buying, as I've said before, because these shims are like £26 each, and this whole set with all these shims in it is uh, £28. So, what's the thickness of this one? Would you look at that? That's 1.88. So let's go for that. Um, it's got a little bit of an edge on it there, so I'm just going to take a, a diamond file and just... This is part of the um, laser cutting or the, or the uh, plasma cutting process and you will often get an edge. It's actually called a recast layer. So it's good to sand that off. So we'll get that off and then we'll get it in. Okay, that's together now. So we've got the, um, the bearing in there, the uh, shim for that bearing. So I've gone 0.25 lower on that one and obviously 0.25 lower on the actual, these smaller shims as well, which sets the preload. Now I haven't started measuring preload and stuff and fussing about it. I've just made sure that I've got a a kind of nice. In fact, that's probably spot on to be honest. But um, and that is total luck. That is not skill. So um, there we go. So that's going to sit on there like that now, and then we can drop our diff in there, and we can start to look at the pattern we're going to get. And about you know three hours later, Jesus, I've been um pressing bearings in and out and changing shims and doing all sorts to try and get the the pattern correct by using the, if you, if you know what I'm talking about, go back and look at the front diff and I use this white aluminium, aluminium oxide mixed with oil to get the pattern on the on the crown wheel. You can see here there it is on the on the crown wheel there. Um, this, this is from the Rover manual, absolute rubbish. Um, it's had me chasing my tail. Uh, it's telling you to fit a thicker shim when you actually need a thinner shim uh, and vice versa. So it's had me chasing my tail. So in the end, what I did was a process of elimination and just ignored that. Just throw it away. Just throw it away. Um, what I did in the end was use the process of elimination. So I went... I, I wanted to get from a starting point where I knew where I was, so I used the standard shim and went point 0.2. And I got this pattern here, so you can see this is the drive side this is the trailing side or the um, overrun side. So then after I'd done the point two, I went for zero and you can see that it's gone back the other way. Um, so here's the drive side and then here's the um, overrun side. So you can see it's swapped ends. So I thought, well, I'll go point one then. Um, so the first pictures were point two, the next pictures were zero. This is point one. So you went plus point one and you can see now on the drive side is pretty much centered. And uh, on the other side, it's a little bit towards the inner edge. I don't know if that's the heel or the toe or what. But um, so there we go. So uh, 
that's basically where it's going to be. So it was, it was actually 0.1 too far in. I've, I've pulled the pinion out towards the centre. I pulled the pinion this way by 0.1. So now I've got to redo all this on the back end and get the, um, get the preload right. It doesn't feel too bad now actually. I've just added 0.1 to the shim that was in there originally so if all this works out at the end of the day out of this shim kit I've only actually used 2.1 shims but still a lot cheaper than uh, buying the rover shims and also if you don't know you need 0.1 then you would have spent a lot more so um, there we go so well, I'm going to call that a day for this video we've drilled and tapped the hole we've done the um, without me filming it all because it just gets so much with trying to film it all if you want to see it all being filmed go back and look at the front one as I say and you'll see me get in the pattern um, and then what we'll do is I'll pick up again with an Ashcroft diff fit in part two um, where I I won't bother with showing you all this again because you've already seen all that I'll get this all set up give it a good clean and then I'll put the Ashcroft diff in and check to see if these bearing caps I think what they're talking about in the manual is these bearing caps could need to, some clearance ground on them you can see they've been ground here so it looks like they may need some clearance on them to clear the cage so we'll make sure we get that done and then we'll strip it all again. I won't bother pressing the bearings out. Give it all a good clean. Give the bearings a good wash. And then reassemble it and all. So um, thanks for watching. I'll see you probably tomorrow with the next part. And, um, and we'll go from there. So bye for now guys.